This week on Machinery Pete TV, the mighty Magnums are in the spotlight on this week's sale, and none of them are finer than this 2008 305 with only 2,000 hours on it. Pete shares some of your pictures from the 2021 harvest, and Tyne Morgan reports on what technology is when it comes to collecting data. Your machinery is a serious investment and at the heart of every farming operation. Some call it a passion. We're Machinery Pete TV, and today we'll cover everything from auction roundups to the classics to the latest trends and technology. Machinery Pete, the most trusted name in farm equipment. Machinery Pete thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com. Hey folks, welcome to Machinery Pete TV and welcome to Northwest Indiana. Today we're just outside of Cedar Lake, Indiana and we're here for a Schrader Real Estate and Auction. Beautiful farm sale with three super low hour case age tractors. And before we watch them sell, we gotta go back to the studio, catch up on the latest farm equipment news. All right, thanks Pete. I'm Clinton Griffiths. For nearly a year now, the rural economy has shown consistent growth. That's according to the latest Rural Main Street Index from Creighton University. For this month, the index rose to 66.1. That's up from September's reading of 62.5. Now you'll remember 50 represents growth neutral. Ernie Goss says the solid grain prices and record low interest rates coupled with growing exports continue to support the rural Main Street economy. Eight out of 10 bankers report that farmers in their areas were in a solid cash position with little need for borrowing. The chief executives at CSX and Union Pacific say a lack of truck drivers, equipment and warehouse workers are all causing congestion in their yards. They say it's forcing the railroad operators to turn down some business during a time of high demand for shipping companies. The railroads are also facing issues within their own operations from damaged bridges to difficulty hiring conductors that they say are hampering them from transporting more goods. Higher gas prices, now higher prices for new cars. The average new car price now tops $45,000. That's according to a new report from Kelly Blue Book and data from True Car. An analyst with True Car says in September, we saw the average transaction price increase more than 7% from last year to an all-time high. The analyst adds that even a modest increase in the availability of new cars may lead to some relief when it comes to prices. Now let's check on some recent prices from around the country. Now back to our host, Machinery Pete. Hey, stick around folks, coming up, we're gonna watch a pair of tractors sell that everybody wants. 10 year old, low hours. These are a pair of 11 model Magnum 290s, 1,423 and 1,627 hours. Hey folks, I'm here with Janet Neitzel and her mom, Karen Boyer. Now, as we were looking at your beautiful uh, equipment here, Janet, beautiful Case IH equipment, you mentioned the family has quite a connection to International Harvester. Your dad, uh, Karen, your late husband, John, mm -hmm. was And a... his father, John, and okay. his father, John. Wow. So Johnny was the fourth John Boyer to work with the International. The fourth John Boyer? Uh -huh. Wow. Fourth generation. Mm -hmm. And what did your husband John do for International? He was, well, the computers. Computers, He was, okay. And he traveled all over the world with computer systems, mm. yeah. So was kind of helping International get into that back when, when everything was becoming computerized, huh? He started in 58 or 59 in Springfield, Ohio. Okay. Went in the computer department. 
Okay. And it just escalated from there. He now, ended up in Chicago as vice president. Really? Mm hmm So Janet, you grew up in an international family. Yes, I did. Uh, Dad had to be pretty pleased with your, you and Gary with your inter international purchases here. Yes, he was. We used to have white equipment, and then when we got married, Dad's like, Janet, we need to integrate a little bit of red into, <laughs> into Gary's, you know, e equipment. Okay. So I'm like, okay. So then we started to get red, and then we just kept, of course, buying bigger tractors because yeah. that's... And I understand you had a, a, a soft spot in your heart for a, a former Magnum. You had a 7120, I understand? I did. We had a 7130, 7120, and Gary got rid of all these, sold the other ones and upgraded. And I just really liked that 7120. I felt comfortable in it. I could do anything with it. And then the Berkey's dealer said, oh, I've got a perfect tractor. You can have a matching 290. Gary can have one. I can have one. And sure. I'm like, you know, I'm really happy with this one. But I caved, and we did get it. And I, and I do like it. So yeah. now we had... His and hers, yeah. 290. Now, what was that discussion like between your father, John, and Gary? Was he, how did he convince them that red was the way to go? Well, every time that we'd go over and have dinner at mom and dad's, because they only lived like maybe 10 minutes away, they were, dad's like, you know, you really, the red tractors is the way to go. You know, you really need to, to get some red. And he's like, no, 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 I'm happy with what I got. And all of a sudden, he must have saw something somewhere. And he was like, okay, dad, look, look what we've got. <laughs> Well, folks, our friends Berkey's, a fantastic Case H dealer here in Northwest Indiana, sold Gary and Janet Knights a pair of Magnum 290s, both 2011 model, one for him, one for her. Now, these things are low hours. One's got 1,423 hours, the other 1,627 hours. Now, just over a year ago, our friends at Trader Real Estate and Auction sold a 12 model Magnum 290 out in Colorado, 1,355 hours for 95,000 bucks but I think we're going to zoom past that today. 137. Anybody else? 137. 137. Put it in 136,500. Get a number. 124,000. I'm a 124,5. 124,5. 125, $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. $125. Here are a few more items that sold on today's sale. Machinery Pete TV is brought to you by Kubota. Together, we do more. Your next piece of equipment is on MachineryPete.com. Search equipment from dealerships across the country to find what you're looking for. Only on MachineryPete.com.
Technology Is, a special report is brought to you by John Deere. As technology has evolved over the past two decades, how farmers use and collect that data has also changed. And while most farmers analyze their own data, many depend on agronomic consultant or equipment dealer to help sort it out. Tyne Morgan reports on what technology is. Illinois farmer Steve Pittstick. From about the middle of last year through about three weeks ago, we were extremely dry. Knows the weather cards he's dealt change every year. The last 90 days we had like four inches of rain and then it started raining and we had seven inches over about a two week period. So now we're pretty good, pretty good shape. With continued rain needed throughout the season, he's come to terms with the things he can't control. Every time we cross a field, trying to document the herbicide, uh, tillage pass, the planting pass, the yield maps. On the leading edge of data adoption. I've got 25 years of data on this farm here where I live. Data driven decisions became a theme for machinery repeat right away. I got my start collecting data in November of 1989. Greg Peterson, creator of MachineryPete.com, also started collecting valuable data before it was popular. I just knew it would be helpful for people to get a handle on, geez, what's, what's that tractor worth? And wanted to have a database where we could uh, provide the answers. Good data that's reliable and trustworthy, whether it's about used equipment values or from a section of your field, can make you better. I think early on we made a lot of uh, things that made 10% differences. In the last five years it's been much more difficult, so we're trying to find those 1 or 2% gains, and they're just not as easy to come by. Kansas State University's Terry Griffin says data shows while precision agriculture has been around since the early 1990s, the majority of farmers aren't fully utilizing their farm data today. Less than half of farms are using yield monitors mated with a GNSS or a GPS receiver that are able to georeference yield monitor data for use later. And the biggest barrier in getting started? The investment. So the benefits of my actively collecting data outweigh the cost of doing so, the investment in the sensors and the human capital cost of managing that data. A recent Farm Journal survey found while a quarter of farmers use a trusted advisor to handle their data, 75% do it on their own. You know, what I do is proprietary, it's my recipe. But as farmers go from just collecting data to actually using the information to make decisions, Griffin says there's value in harvesting data to plan for next year. My research indicates the greatest use within the farm gates of farm data is the combination of technologies to implement and collect data, implement on-farm experiments and collect data from those experiments. And for farmers fluent in farm data like Pitstick, instead of big picture, he wants to reap detailed data even by the row. You know, what machine impacts are, what the planners do, what the tillage passes do, look at a lot more uh, uh, minor data if you will. we got to get the big data right first and then we'll move down to the, the, the smaller stuff that we can actually uh, affect. Griffin says the automation element of harvesting data is essential. We've automated that with machinery. Unfortunately we have not been as good at automating um, some of the tedious tasks with data. As farmers, extension researchers and agribusinesses work to unlock the key to make it easier for farmers to tap into the most valuable data on their farm. It's the year 2021, where this is going to be down the road, the decisions we make, the information we're going to use to make them is going to be completely different. A quest to harvest data differently and efficiently, that's been decades in the works and may look differently decades down the road. Folks, please stay with us. You're not going to want to miss our feature item on the show today. Super sharp 2008 Case H305 Magnum, 2027 hours. Got equipment to sell privately but tired of scams and hassles? Visit MachineRepeat.com and click Sell Mine. MachineRepeat.com, the simple and secure way to buy and sell equipment online. All right, folks, time for our feature item on the show today, a 2008 Case H305 Magnum. This thing's only got 2,027 hours on it. Now, last year, the average auction price on a Magnum 305 was up 15.5% to just under 90,000 bucks. But I think our 305 today, I think this could be a hot one. And I got 100, 105, yeah. now 10, 110, 110 dollars, 120, 120, 130. 120. 
Folks, we just watched the highest auction price in seven and a half years on a Magnum 305. The 08 model with 2,027 hours comes in at $140,000. Well, folks, this time of year, my head always turns to combines, harvest season. And I tell you, over the years, I just got to thank you for uh, sending me so many great pictures, tagging me on social media posts of your combines rolling in the field. Quite often, a lot of these pictures will have multi-generational, both combines out in the field, but also family members, uh, your dad, your grandpa, great grandpa out there, still getting her done. Love these pictures. Now recently, uh, Trevor Egena from Iowa sent me this awesome uh, drone picture. And you can see Trevor's post, he tagged me on a Twitter saying, Pete, you know, three generations of John Deere combines uh, still rolling on the family farm, hoping someday we can get up into an X9 very cool stuff. Thank you, Trevor, for sending me, tagging me on that picture. Now, what was interesting was the same day Trevor tagged me on that photo on Twitter, I got an email from Marty Hermson down near Dyersville, Iowa, and he sent a couple pictures, and Marty said, hey, Pete, uh, my dad bought this John Deere 6600 Side Hill uh, when it was two years old, back from the old uh, Kelker implement in Dyersville, which now, of course, is Bodensteiner implement, great John Deere dealer down there. But uh, Pete, we think this might have been one of the first John Deere 6600 side hills made. He sent me a picture of the serial number with it. Now, of course, Deere made the 6600 combine from 1970 to 78, but they didn't start making the side hill 6600 until 1975. So, you know, very cool piece of history there. And Marty mentioned he and the kids enjoy watching Machine Repeat TV and following the story. So Marty and kids, thank you for following along. Now, if we talk auction prices, uh, here's a picture of the highest 6,600 I've seen sold the last few years at auction. Now, it's not a side hill, but it, it was sold by uh, Kyle Kelso on an auction up in Adair, Illinois, back March 9th of 2019. And it had 2,982 engine hours on it, so for 6,600 bucks. So really fun to see these nice condition older combines still in the field getting her done. And uh, when they show up at auction, great fun to see what they sell for. Well, folks, I put a few miles on the machinery repeat pickup coming down to this sale, uh, about six hour drive from southeast Minnesota. But I tell you what, totally worth it to watch these three beautiful case size tractors sell. Highest auction price in seven and a half years on the Magnum 305 and the pair of Magnum 290s at 136.5 and 126. Very strong. Tune in next week to Machine Repeat TV. We'll have some more fun equipment to show you. Machine Repeat thanks these premier sponsors for their support. Sullivan Auctioneers, let our team of professionals show you how to make your auction a success. Visit SullivanAuctioneers.com.
Best way I've seen to fix faded paint, Dakota Shine. Order online at dakotashine.com or visit your regional farm stores to pick up your Dakota Shine today.